This video is brought to you by Photogenic by BenQ. Please check out this Facebook page for the latest news, videos and articles about photography and so much more. Uh, so I apologize for that, but I'm still stuck on this guy. Uh, but we are going to open something very soon uh, uh, to show you something else. So I just wanted to show you a little trick that I've learned around uh, uh, working at the mill. So this is a smoke uh, layer. Uh, I'm the king of smoke uh, of elements. I buy every element known to man. I have about four terabytes of 2D elements uh, on my library. Uh, there's quite a lot of uh, really nice places to buy uh, elements. There's a lot of companies in the world, in, in the web, that actually sell you the elements with the raw shots. So you can buy the red files and you can buy the actual uh, raw. So this is a piece of smoke. And what I do here is, of course, I denoise it because it's noisy as hell. And I mirrored it and then I brought it into the geometry. So basically what I have here is I have my geometry. I need to switch it on. I need to tell them that that's the new geometry. Yes, you can go ahead. I need to reload it uh, because it wasn't loaded. I switched it off, uh, but there you go, that, there, there it is. Still need to do this on my pipeline, so it reloads automatically. I, have, I don't have that yet. Um, so you see, this is the entire harbor of where we did the scene. Um, and this is the little dude there. And then I have the smoke there. Um, and so he's already passed through the smoke. And what you usually do to do this is you want to know where the geometry is to, so that you put the smoke on the correct place. So you have the parallax, so you can put smoke in front, smoke in the back, smoke in the sides. And so what I did here was I rendered it through the scanline render. So I have this. I basically have the smoke layer uh, using the camera angle. So that's the smoke. I don't think it will. I don't think it will play back. Yeah, well. So that's the the smoke layer that I have. If I look at it through the 2D uh, version, you can see that that's the moving smoke we're using the camera. Then I do a bit of color correction, put a bit of blue because the scene is supposed to be uh, moonlight, you know. Uh, you'll see the project tomorrow. If you, if you are very kind to come to my keynote tomorrow, you can see the trailer. I'll show you the whole trailer. It's a premiere because the trailer is not out yet on the web. So you'll see it for the first time ever. It's, a, it, it's worth watching. It's two minutes of badass uh, trailer. So um, basically I color correct it. And then what I did here was I have the render of him you need to bear with me so this what is this going this is coming from here it's coming from him from uh, alvin which is the main character i moved around from frame to frame so now i have to load it just uh, bear with me so that's the alvin and what i did here was um in the depth of field pass here you see that i have two depth of fields the reason I have two depth of fields is because I have uh, Alvin, which was defocused. But then I also have the depth of field itself. I know this is a bit of an inception moment, but I'm depth of fielding the depth of field, I guess. That's what I'm doing. I'm, depth, I'm, I'm putting depth of field on the depth pass. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to have this as a mask. So I want to use this as a mask to cut elements. So now the depth of field is with depth of field. I then bring it in into the system um, and then it goes in here it gets shuffled out i then have a bit of a color edge extension because the edges were a bit broken and i'll show you why this is there i'll show you in a minute then i bring in the same alpha channel which is the alpha channel of alvin and then i pre-multiply it so now i have basically a antilized edge depth of field fog pass with depth of field and then what happens here is my smoke then gets color corrected by that. And then that, that gets then color corrected. So what I get is I get like a fog pass, but it's kind of cut by the geometry kind of. It's almost like pretending like it's like, a, like deep compositing for, for children, you know? I'm doing like a children's version of deep compositing. Uh, I don't have deep compositing on my projects because it's still a bit too much for me in terms of working remotely, and it's a bit too much uh, to handle in terms of file sizes. Yes? Just to um, yeah. specify, so what, what you're doing, you basically cutting the smoke you have yeah. with the geometry, but you, by, by using the... I'm not cutting it by the geometry, sorry. I'm, you misunderstood. I'm cutting it by the depth. So I'm using the depth field to cut it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. If I, if you do something to that on my side, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll, show, I'll show you why I had to do that. I'll show you why I had to do this. So if I don't do it, right? If I leave the depth of field like that, and I use it to cut my, to cut my uh, smoke, this will happen. Um, the smoke will be cut by a sharp uh, uh, mask, you see? And now what will happen is when I merge this on top of the render, the guy has depth of field, but then the, sh the, the, the layer of smoke doesn't have depth of field. So that's why I did this. Uh, if you wait. Yeah, the edges won't match. That will be the issue. Like if I, if, you, if I just put a blur, it won't work. But you see, if I merge it, maybe this shot is not the perfect shot to show this problem, but um, because you know it's, it's a bit rough. But you can clearly see that the edges are a bit strange because the, the, the actual uh, uh, smoke is not merged because the, there's too much depth of field going on there. So what I, what I do here is if I switch this on again, if I put it on, You'll see that this wraps in to the edge of the arm. If you just wait a few seconds. It's, a, it's really slow with the hard drive I have here. So yeah, it's really hard to tell on this specific project. Uh, but because it's so bright, the scene. But if I, if I show you here, You'll see exactly what I mean. So you see, if, if you look at the edges there, if you look at the shoulder pad, for example, if I don't have the depth of field on, you'll get a sharp seam. If I have the depth of field on, you'll get the edges merging. Like, for example, the sword you saw there, the sword was sharp on the actual layer of smoke. And as opposed to being blurred, which is what it should be, because it has depth of field. That's why I'm doing two of them. And the reason I have to do two of them is because this one here is only for the image. So I'm not affecting, and this is because when I, if I say apply depth of field to everything, the bouquet node will crash. And so I don't do that. Because that's a bug that it has. So I can't do it to all. Otherwise I didn't have to do a separate one. I could have just made um, uh, all to all. That's why I have a separate, but they are, they are clones. So whenever I do one, the other one changes as well. And so what happens here is I shuffle it out, like I said, get pre-multiplied, merged, and then that smoke gets done. Now, the reason I did the pre-multiplication is because of the edges. So if I, if, I don't do, if I don't do this, these are the edges that you get. You basically get a really raw edge from the, from the depth of field because the depth of field is not anti -laced. So what I do is I do an edge extension and then I put a pre-mold. So that will effectively put the edges back to where they were with still using a, a fog pass. And so now this fog, which is what I call the fake two and a half fog, that's what I usually call it, um, then gets applied on top of the actual render and it just gives you a bit of atmospheric flying around. So if I look at the final render, you see that the smoke that goes through him kind of feels like it actually is going through his body. In certain, certain, like the shield and the sword is in front of the smoke, but also in the back. So you have all the smoke kind of feeling like, especially if you look down here on his, his armor, you can kind of feel the smoke kind of goes through here and it gets cut by the, the shield. So it's a, it's a remarkable effective technique to do smoke without ha having to actually do real 3D smoke. You guys know what I mean? Kind of works really well. I do this on every project. Even if I have a smoke layer, I just put it in. Because the more realistic elements you have, the more nicer it will look and it will kind of look a bit more real. Of course, keep in mind this project is not supposed to look real. This is a stylized trailer with like these characters, they don't look real at all. So they're, they're not supposed to look real. They're supposed to look like the game. So that's why they look like that. Um, you guys all with me still? <laughs>